Welcome to the third day of the webinar on uh, intervention to develop motor skill of students with special education need. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank uh, to Simo San uh, for having me today, and I would like to wish a congratulation to everyone because for staying with us for three days, and I hope you have learned so much during the during this webinar. Okay. So before we start, can we get to know each other first? And I wish you can turn on your video because I want to see your face. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay, here. Yeah. So I will give you a link uh, on the chat box. So you can click the link. Here, I'm not sure if this link is available to your country, but you can try first. Can you see this? Yeah. Can you click on the link? It doesn't work for me. <laughs> How about this? How about this? Yeah, it did not work. We saw the uh, you are showing on your link, but sometimes it's not work. But other participant, can you try to click on the link and open it? Yeah, but still small for me. It's not. Okay, I see it's not uh, any key working here. We Sorry? saw your link. You saw your screening showing, but okay. but it, it's not work. Oh, it's not work. How about others? I see someone commenting on this one. Yeah, see. Okay, those who can click on the link, you can answer the question. You can write your name and your country and years of teaching and interest. Okay, write in one, write in one uh, comment. Okay, for example, like my Sharizal, I'm from Malaysia. Seven years in first case. Okay, some, some, uh, something like this. Uh, see? Oh, so I can see someone uh, commenting. Andra, Andra Sang, is it? Philippines, thesis of teaching, interest in reading. That's good. You and Philippines, been teaching for five years. I enjoy. Reading. Great. Samawi. Okay. How about other? <laughs> Can you log in and comment? How to pronounce it? To nine mai, Vietnam, eight years, and reading book and cooking. That's good. And two, Hanoi National University Education, or oh, HNUM, eh, HNUE, okay. I have nearly 20 years in experience teaching in, in university, 15 years of working with CWD, that's good. Divya Tiras, Indonesia, 11 years, yeah, reading, good. Cambodia, six years, and teacher, very interesting, and tra very interesting on training, very good. Anil Guda. Malaysia, 10 years, traveling. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay, can you Hello. hear it? But. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I can see that your years of teaching is more like two years. Or some, some of you have more like 10 years. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> To be in Malaysia, seven years, special education primary school teacher. That's good. Okay, that's great sharing. <laughs> so it's good to know everyone here because I need to know your background so that I know how to start the session and what to expect from you guys. Okay, all right. So 
Now let's move on to our slide, okay? Oh, you also come in here. Oh, there's someone from Sarawak and Tranganu. Okay, hello. Okay. So now we are on the third part of the webinar. So the title will be uh, Enhancing Multiple Skill Performance for Children with Disability Strategy for Teachers. Okay, I know you've been waiting for this topic because this is what you're going to do in your class later. Okay, so let me introduce myself. My name is Shari Zabeslam. I've been working as the occupational therapist. Uh, I'm with Genius Kuna Center for seven or oh no, six years already. Okay, I also get training in University of Southern California on sensory integration level one to uh, until three. And then I just graduated master in occupation therapy developmental disability and also have postgraduate diploma in special education autism. Okay. So that's all about me. So today we're going to cover these uh, nine topics. The first one we're going to go on the common problems that uh, often observed with a child with disabilities. And then we're going to go on the fundamental of the motor development. And then uh, correct your posture. And then we move to the gross motor activities and classroom-based activities, in-hand manipulation, free writing, principle in conducting the intervention, also the grading activity. So before we move on to the topic, so let me ask you first, do you uh, do you hear any background noise here? Is it okay, everyone? Uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and speak or write when you comment. Is it the, uh, the noise is here is okay? Okay, good. Can you see my slide clearly? Okay, good. Is my voice clear or I'm talking too fast? If I'm talking too fast, you may stop me and ask me to repeat, okay? It's a bit habit for me to talk very, very fast. <laughs> uh, and you guys, are you in a comfort, comfortable uh, sitting? Uh, yeah, maybe one hour. And we yeah. can break, that could be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you need break, let, just let me okay, let, just let me know, okay? So that you can uh, have a five minute break and then we continue on the next topic, okay? Yeah, All right, that could so be good. that's good. <laughs> I hope you're ready now. So I'm so excited to yeah. share with you guys. And I wish also you are so excited to listen and uh, and communicate with me uh, because I like to talk with the participant because I don't talk uh, alone here. <laughs> okay, so are you ready? So this is our first uh, subtopic. So we're going to go on the common problem. Okay, so when the child, uh, our student come to us, right, so we can observe them what are their common problems before we deciding what activity to give to them. So it's very important uh, teachers to have a very good observational skill. If you teachers cannot observe well, so you might give a wrong intervention or wrong activity to your student, okay? So the first one, maybe you can observe on the pain or discomfort of the student. So because uh, motor development also involved with the uh, muscle and also the bones. So it's very obvious when the child has uh, pain or discomfort over the joint, over the muscle and everything, that's the, the sign that are, they are showing that they are having a weak motor development. Okay? Okay. The number two, maybe you can observe on the fatigue because children with uh, motor development issue, so may easily tired and they also unable to stay in a, uh, stay longer in the activity. Okay, so you can observe if the children like to uh, stop you or like to uh, jump from one activity to another. So maybe that indicate that they have they are having an issue with their muscle or motor issue okay okay all right so now we go to the uh, uh poor handwriting so you also may observe you don't have a poor uh, handwriting 
So you can see that they are having a messy handwriting and they also might complain on the pain over the finger joint. Okay, for example, like they cannot uh, stay sustain longer during writing activity or maybe they only able to copy a few words and they don't want to do any more. So maybe you can observe those uh, signs. Okay. Oh, sorry. The next one you can also observe uh, if the children have a low motivation. Okay. So some children also may uh, involve the emotion during this, uh, during when they are doing activity. For example, uh, this low motivation also involve uh, uh, due to the prolonged problem, problem that might create the uh, decrease in motivation. Okay, child might find is, the activity is not fun anymore. They are bored. They don't want to do it, and they are getting frustrated easily. Okay, and the next one, children so also might show uh, activity avoidance, so they don't want to do activity. So this very these two is linked together. The activity avoidance and also the low motivation is linked together. For example, when the child uh, show activity avoidance, that means that also indicating that they are having a low motivation to do the activity. Okay, so when the uh, motivation is low, the child might always try to avoid the activity. Okay, and the last one also you might see the child is very clumsy. Okay, they they don't run properly or walk properly. Okay, that's all I can list down here. And okay, how to go next? Okay, wait a Okay, the next one is we're gonna go to the fundamental of motor development. Okay, so here, uh, maybe some of the term you are not uh, very familiar, but it's okay, we're gonna learn today. So this is very important for us to understand the fundamental of motor development. This means that when the child comes to you, right? So you need to know which part of the body that you want to focus first. Okay. When you're giving the activity, for example, throwing or catching the ball, what muscle or what bones you are targeting? Which part of the body you are targeting? Uh, so this is very important for you to know first. You cannot give simply give the activity to the children and then expecting the children will improve. There is no such thing. Okay. So there is very important for you to understand this figure. Okay. So when you want to give the motto uh, intervention to the student, it's very important for you to consider these three things. Okay. First thing first, you must provide uh, or you must target it. Uh, um, uh, the body part, which is from medial to the lateral. Medial meaning that from the middle of the body to away from the body. For example, you might target on the back bone first or the back muscle before you target targeting on the hand. Okay. The next one, you also might consider on the proximal to this, meaning that when you give activity, it's very important for you to give activity that increase that increase the shoulder, elbow, and wrist joint. Ah, okay. First, okay. So when you see the children uh, having difficulty in writing, so we don't focus on the finger only, but we also focusing on the other joint or other muscle. For example, when the uh, student shows a very weak, weak uh, muscle pressure grip, so we're gonna go on the uh we're gonna see on the we're gonna try to improve on the shoulder part and then the elbow part and then the wrist part and later we focus on the joint on the uh finger okay because it's very common to see teachers or parents out there they are no, it, no, uh, sorry everyone can you mute yourself <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Are you with me, everyone? Is everything okay? Okay, good. I can see your thumbs up. Very good. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. 
uh, teacher, I would like to your your voice so so far. I difficult to listen. Oh, okay. So Sorry. like like echo like. Sorry. Oh, is please it? check I your air. Uh, I can see someone laughing. <laughs> okay, let me try to talk very slow so that you can capture the word by word, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? So, the third one is the cephalic and caudal. So, a cephalic meaning that from the head to the uh, below here. So, when you give activity to the student, that's very important for you to address on this area down okay so you don't give a student activity uh difficult activity that only focus on the hand only but you ignore the other part that is very important for the development okay so if you have anything uh to comment you can write on the chat here i will read here okay uh, no worry all right so can we move on do you understand this now? Okay. I can see no one commenting. So I, I assume you are you are good. Okay. <laughs> okay, I can see that. Thumbs up. Very good. Okay, so I want to ask a question. Which part of the body you want to focus first? Ah, tell me. If you want to provide activity for the student, if you want to give the uh, motto activity to the student, which part of the body you want to target or strengthen first? Uh, tell me. And uh, you can commenting, commenting on the trunk. I can see the comment here saying trunk. Okay, others. Hmm. How about others? Come on, come on, you must be uh, upper arm. Okay, shoulder. Okay, some more. Okay, okay. Okay, some more, some more faster. <laughs> it's a very early in the morning, so I'm, uh, I'm sure everyone is uh, it's good enough. <laughs> Ten, okay. Hand finger. Okay, okay. Leg. Oh, you want to focus leg first. Okay, there is nothing wrong or right because it depends on the problem of the student. Okay, if the uh, student has uh, shown a problem in hand, so you might focus on the hand. But uh, when you provide activity, but right, if you don't not sure which part of the body that he, they, they need to focus first with the student, right? So you might start with the three things here. From the neck to the big bone or big muscle into the bottom here. Okay. And then when this uh, this part is strong enough. Okay, wait, let me uh, scribble here. So you're going to start from here. And then here and here. Okay. So if the student shows a very good trunk control, very good neck control, then you can move to another part, which is now ah, guess what? Which is the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and also the finger. Okay. So this is very important for you to observe the children first and know which part of the body you want to focus or strengthen first okay and then you might also have to see or observe uh and strengthen the knee joint and also the ankle joint okay so far you are okay give me thumbs up okay good job nice one okay Let's go to the quiz. <laughs> okay, quiz number one. If the student demonstrates weakness on arm, which part of the body you want to strengthen first? Huh. Which one? Tell me. A, B, C, D, E, F. 
If the student demonstrate weakness on arm, which part of the body you want to strengthen first? D, uh, D. A, B, C, D, D, E, F. Mm. Okay. D, D, E, F. Okay. A, okay. Okay, good answer. Okay, you can work combine together from A, B, C, and D. Uh, try to strengthen these four, four areas first before you move on the other part of the arm, for example, elbow and wrist or, or finger. Uh, okay, that's good. See, you are understand now. <laughs> that's a very good. Okay, so you, we move on the second squeeze. Oh, sorry, forgot the other two. Okay, so if the student demonstrate poor posture or weak trunk muscle, which part of the body you want to work on? Huh. The student demonstrate poor posture or weak uh, trunk muscle. Okay, A, A, B, C, A, B, C. Hmm. A, B, C. Okay, yes, very good. Uh, sounds like uh, everyone is... Uh, more understand now, so I can stop lah my my sharing today because you are very good. <laughs> okay, that's good. Great answer, everyone is correct. Okay, number three. So if the student struggle to control hand during coloring activity, which part of the body you want to work first? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Ah, the student struggle to control hand during coloring activity. F, okay, D, E, F, D, E, F, D, E, F, A, D, A, A, D, E, F, oh, okay, D, E, F, F, okay, okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, oh. <laughs> okay, that's good, so the answer will be D, E, F, okay, you can focus on the three parts of the body, the arm part, okay, but you also might want to observe on the A, Part A, B, and also C. If there is no issue, they can move on the D, E, and F. Okay, that that's good. Uh, sounds like everyone is understand now. Okay, so uh, I'm very happy. So we can proceed on the next chapter. Okay. So if you want to improve your motor skill, there is four area you can improve. It's either you improve on the strength, endurance. Or you can improve the control or you can improve the coordination or coordinate. Okay, so how? If you want to focus on the strength, you might want to add more weight during the activity. For example, you might start with the smaller ball into the bigger ball. Okay, the, the lighter ball into the heavy ball. So that's how you can create a variety of activity and at the same time you can improve the strength of the muscle. Okay, so it's very important for you to have a variety choice of ball, different weight, different style, different color, so that the child able to learn new thing, able to try a new thing, and at the same time improve their muscle uh, strength. Okay, number two, you can focus on the endurance. How you want to focus on the endurance? Is by adding more time. Okay, for example, you can increase the time uh, of the activity from the short duration into the longer duration. For example, if you see the student able to do the activity in duration of one minute. So teachers, you can target to improve the duration by adding more time to two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, or ten minutes gradually, but do not force the children. Okay, so that's why it's very important for you to observe if this is able to attend to your activity in the longer duration and how long the attention will be. So from there, you can improve the endurance, uh, okay? Because some students, some students show a very good strength, but they cannot sustain in the longer period. Uh, so that's why it's very important for you to focus also on the endurance. So you might also want to track, for example, like 
during the uh, writing activity, the student able to sit on the table on the chair for two minutes. So tomorrow I want to aim the student to improve the endurance to four minutes. Uh, that's how you can write your aim, daily aim for the specific student. That is very important for you to keep track until you what until uh, what uh, uh, until what number your student is at the performance now. Uh, okay, understand? I consider you understand. Give me thumbs up, showing that you are good. That's very good. Well done, everyone. Okay, so number three, you can also improve on the control. Okay, because some children also have a good sign, good endurance, but they cannot control. You can observe when you're trying to give, uh, for example, activity like throwing and catching the ball. They are unable to throw or they are unable to catch the ball. So, in order to improve the control, you might increase the frequency of uh, the frequency of the activity. For example, you can practice more, doing more exercise to improve the skill. So, if student showing uh, cannot, uh, if student unable to throw or catch the ball, you might also want to increase the frequency of practicing that skill so that they can able to control more. Good lah. Hmm. Okay. So the last one, you can also improve on the coordination. The coordination part is the meaning that you integrate other parts of the body. Okay. For example, you are giving activity uh, with one hand. So you might uh, integrate the activity with another hand. For example, left and right hand together. So that will improve the coordination between left and right side of the body. Okay. You also can improve the coordination by adding other part of the body for example that you can uh, involve the vision so it will be the eye and hand coordination for example the same activity like throwing ball right so uh, the same have to see the target and throw the ball so that involve the eye and also the hand the coordination between these part okay and you might also want to try on the hand and leg coordination. For example, like you're walking on marching. So when you're marching, you have to flatten your right hand and left leg. So that will be coordination between hand and the leg. Uh, okay. So last one, maybe you can integrate between the vision, the eye, hand, and leg. For example, you play soccer, soccer ball, right? Soccer. So you need to run fast and kick the ball and aim to the targeted goal. So that's how you improve or uh, widen uh, the skill of the student so that many parts of the body can be integrated together. Because some students are able to throw ball with one hand, but it's very difficult for them to integrate with other parts of the body during the activity. Why this is very important? Because this will show in the classroom. For example, when you give activity like uh, writing on the whiteboard, so that involves the eye and also the hand to coordinate. Okay, so the child will need to see on the whiteboard, remember on the brain, and need to write on the uh, on the paper. So that will integrate the eye and hand to the uh, coordination together. So that's very important for you to give others activity that is not a table task activity for them to master the eye hand coordination skill. Okay. I hope you're clear about this. Uh, if you are okay, allow me to proceed. Give me thumbs up. That's good. <laughs> okay. So 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 now we are going to go on the first intervention. So my intervention is very simple. Okay, I will make sure you teacher also can do it in your classroom without doubt, without any problem. Because I'm very sure that even in Malaysia, right, when I go to school and advise teacher on what to do in their classroom, I receive many complaints for them saying that, oh, I, we cannot do this because we don't have equipment. Our school is very poor. We don't have a special trained teacher here to train to train the student. We don't have a bigger room, blah, 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 blah. 
I'm sure this also happened to your country then, right? Okay, so uh, I will try to simplify the intervention here so that even though you don't have a right equipment to do it, it's okay as long as you can practice this, okay? The first one is I would like you to correct your posture. Okay, did you know that you can improve your motor skill by changing your posture during activity? Uh, even though your sitting skill, your standing skill, or your uh, uh, crawling or lying skill also can improve your motor or muscle strength. How? 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 Let me tell you. The first one you can try is uh, posture, standing posture. Okay. By doing standing activity, you can strengthen strengthen the trunk. Okay, let me draw here so that you can see. Okay, by doing the standing activity, you can strengthen the trunk, and also you can uh, also develop coordinate uh, the shoulder and also the elbow. Ah, this is very good activity for your student. Some students are unable to sit on the chair longer time, right? So you might ask them to do the activity or, to, or uh, 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 writing activity while standing. There is no wrong as, as long as they're involved in the activity. Uh, okay. So activity you can do while standing. For example, that like you can try a writing on the wall or coloring on the wall here. Or you can ask the student to cut and paste on the wall, put a sticker, or erase the whiteboard in your classroom. So all this activity can help them to strengthen the trunk, elbow, and shoulder. Ah, so you don't need equipment, expensive equipment. <laughs> okay. All right. Need to do for how long? Eh? How long time? Ah. So this is a very tricky question. You need to observe the student how long uh, the endurance is. If the student able to maintain activity for one minute, so you do activity for one minute. But remember in mind that, that, that you need to improve or, or grading the activity into the longer time. So, but you do in the um, grading, you, you need to do uh, grading. For example, like if you are able to stand in one minute, you don't force them to stand for 10 minutes. That is very not good. Okay. So you can try gradually increase the uh, duration. There is no wrong. Okay. Depends on the student. Okay. All right. So the next one, you can also try activity with a supine or lying on the back. Uh, okay. So by doing this position, uh, by doing this uh, uh, position, you can stabilize stabilize the head, the trunk, and also the leg. Okay, because all this joint is supported on the floor. Okay, so we, this will decrease the fatigue of the student because some students, uh, when their muscle, um, they are working more on the muscle, they are fatigued easily. So you can ask them to lie down on the floor and do activity while like lying down okay lying down okay so this activity will strengthen the shoulder elbow and also the wrist here okay so how you want to grading this activity you can add more uh, thick book so that it become heavy so when the heavy book here so the muscle here will work more okay but first, you might want to try with the light book, very a thin book, so that the student get used to it first. Uh, okay, so activity you can do here, maybe you can try with the reading book, singing while lying down on the floor, or throwing ball, throwing ball while lying down. Okay. All right. So the third one, you can also do the supine flexion. Uh, this is called supine flexion or lying down. Because uh, here is the supine lying, but this one is supine flexion, which is you flex your knee and your neck. Okay. So by doing this activity, uh, by doing this activity, you can strengthen the neck here, neck muscle, the trunk, and also the pelvic, uh, the hip here. 
Ah, so all this muscle will be strengthened. So activity you can do, for example, like uh, rocking side to side, left or right, left to right, and also you can do the uh, uh, sorry, uh, for forward here or backward here. Uh, this 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 motion. Uh, okay. So later I will show you the video so that you will get the idea on how to do it. Okay. Okay, so so far the three position you understand. Uh, if you are okay, give me thumbs up. Okay, that's very good. <laughs> very easy to teach you all. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we move on the four four position. You can try also the prone. Prone is the lying on the stomach. Okay, so by doing this position, you can uh, strengthen your neck because your neck will be on the hyperflexion. Okay, then your shoulder and your elbow because shoulder and elbow is on the weight bearing, which means that all your body weight will be pressed on the shoulder and also on the elbow. So by doing this, you can strengthen this region. Ah, okay. So if you see your student uh, having difficulty in writing, so you might try this position, do it on the floor, so that your student able to improve the uh, strength of the hand. Ah. So activity you can do while in prone position. You can try uh, reading books while lying on stomach, playing both games or watching TV. Okay. All right. So the number five, you can try the prone extension. Uh, just now it's a prone, prone uh, like on stomach, right? So now it's a prone extension, meaning that you are doing in the line on stomach, but you extend or you stretch your back muscle until like the curve like this, uh, like a superman. So you can strengthen the neck here, and you can also strengthen the trunk and also the shoulder. Okay. Uh, oh wait. Okay. Okay. So you can do uh, try to do to do the activity like a Superman here during the classroom. For example, you may be ask them to do simple exercise like this before they start. You start with your lesson. Okay. Okay. The number six. You can also do a position like squat. Ah. Huh? So while uh, while doing this, right, you can improve or strengthen the trunk and also the. Uh, strong here and also the leg here. Okay, I also always uh, see children with this uh, disability like very difficult for them to squat. So maybe you can ask them to squat and stand up and squat and stand up and do repeatedly, so that the back muscle and also the leg muscle can be strengthened. So uh, by doing this position, right, you can add activity. For example, you can play. During the play time or during the floor time, so ask them to do the squat while playing. So it's okay. Okay. So far you are okay, right? Okay. If you are okay, give me thumbs up. The teacher who want to practice all activity will they need to be trained by Doctor OOT? Um, the activity I've shown here, uh, this, this position, right? There is uh, no need. Is uh, but you can get uh, advice from the expert, lah. For example, like OT, uh, the physical therapist on on how to do it, lah. Uh, okay. If you are not sure, but if you are very confident, you can try with your class and see if the student uh shown any sign of discomfort or any good sign. So if this is shown a good sign, that means that your intervention is uh, okay. But if you, the student shows a negative impact on this activity, you might stop and talk to the professional. Get an advice, okay? But for me, this uh, position, posture is okay to practice, uh, okay? 
Okay, we have another three position. Okay, hey, the next one you can also try to the kneeling. Okay, so uh, by doing kneel activity, you can uh, strengthen or stabilize the uh, neck. You can stabilize the neck. Neck will be in the uh, strengthen like this, and then you can strengthen the shoulder. Uh, center the shoulder and also the knee okay so this is also the weight bearing weight bearing meaning that all the weight body will be put will be placed on the knee so the leg will be increased in strength okay so by this position you can do activity like writing or coloring on the wall sticking sticker and also wiping or erasing the whiteboard okay so the position look like yoga poses, right? Is it to use yoga for kids or oh, some position? This is not a yoga position. This is a normal position, like we are other people also do it. Okay, but also, but uh, you can also if you know how to do yoga, it's very good. Also, you can practice with your student. But uh, when you are in a yoga position, like, I'm not sure if you are if you can add activity during the yoga. Uh, for example, like yoga sitting, can you do other activity while sitting in the yoga position? I'm not sure. Okay, but if you know how to conduct a yoga, you can also practice it. Uh, okay, so but for me, I don't get any training on the yoga, so I can't give advice on it. Lah. Okay. Okay, the next one, you can try a four-point crawling. So four-point crawling meaning that you are in a crawling position. Okay, uh, so all the, uh, you can strengthen the neck here and also the shoulder and wrist and elbow and knee. Okay, you can see that the weight bearing is on the uh, on the elbow here and the shoulder here and also on the knee. So the, all the weight body weight will be placed here, so it, you can strengthen this body part. Okay. So by doing this position, you can do activities like a playing time, playing puzzle, and, and all that. Okay. And the next one, you can also do the side lying. Okay, side lying like this. So this will strengthen the neck, trunk, shoulder, and elbow and wrist. So activity you can do like you can uh, ask students to do a reading activity or board game or watching TV by positioning the student in this position. Okay. And the last one, you can try also a long leg sitting. Uh, some students cannot cross the, sit, the leg, right, right? So you can practice like this, where the uh, position can stabilize the leg and strengthen the trunk. Okay? So by doing this position, you can do activity like reading or playing time. Okay? So far, are we good? Any question? Can you understand me? Or you can also comment, maybe I talk too fast. Okay. Okay, good. I see very many uh, thumbs up. That is very good. Okay, if you are, don't have anything to ask. Excuse me, can I have a question about yes. us? Yeah. Who's speaking? So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, ah. Thank you so much for some suggestion. Many suggestion about the uh, postural activity. I think it's very useful for the CWDs. So my question is that you know that uh, every child is so different. Every child is so different. So uh, if I have a child need to do some activity for the postural activity, so OT from OT or doctor, can you have a plan for for her or for him or not? And how long, how many times per week or something like this? And each time, many times long you can use for the each choice because every choice is so different. I mean, yeah, so thank you. Okay. Good question. Okay. So basically, when the child comes to OT, right, I will observe first and see uh, how the muscle works and how long the muscle can maintain in that position. So I will try to do activity of playing with the child with various position and I want to see the child will try to uh, reposition the body. So how long? So from there, I will get the information. For example, like the child able to do a supine position in one minute. So by that 
by having the information, I will advise teacher to do activity like, or you can uh, advise the teacher in the class by saying that a oh, teacher you can do a supine position with your student not more than one minute because uh, the child will try, uh, will, uh, try to avoid or will, will complain of pain after one minute duration in this position. So the teacher will do the same activity in the classroom and by gradually we increase the position from one minute to two minutes and three minutes and so on. But by position, right, we cannot ask them to do more than 10 minutes because this position will stress the muscle. So maybe you can add a few position during activity, the same activity. For example, like you do, you do the coloring, right? So you can try uh, coloring uh, one minute sitting, one minute uh, supine, one minute standing, the same activity, but different posture. Uh, it's okay because we respect the chain we respect the child pain, we respect the child interest. So if the student shown um, discomfort or shown a lack of motivation to continue, you can simply change the position and follow the child's lead. Uh, okay, so there is nothing wrong because we know that we want to improve the uh, muscle strength and muscle endurance. So that's why we can try a various position for them to try first and see how long it can go. Mm. So suitable for how many years old child? So I've been working on the child with the age of uh, four to seven years old. So there is no, uh, so far there is, um, I can say that in the preschool student, you can practice it. Uh, but as I mentioned before, you need to observe if the child shows any discomfort or pain. Okay, if they show any sign, you might take note and try to change the position or change the activity. Okay, that is a very good question. Okay, because it's very important for teacher to understand this. Because I've seen also many teachers here in Malaysia, they like to force students. Okay, some lah, not, not all. <laughs> some students like to force, some teachers like to force students to do activity until they complete the activity in one position. Uh, so we force them to sit on the chair and do calorie until, they, until 10 to 15 minutes, which is too long for them. So we need to observe and respect their pain. Uh, okay, that's good. All right, so any more question? If not, I will proceed to the next one. We need to do assessment before and after activity to adapt the, the eh, sorry. Uh, we need to do assessment before and after uh, do activity to adapt the next activity. Yes, you can do like, not like assessment, but you can also like a simple observation. Uh, that's why it's very important for me, as I mentioned before, uh, the teacher to have a very good observation skill. If you can observe your child well, so I'm sure you can, uh, you know so what the problem and you know so what activity to give to them to improve the, uh, the, the, the muscle. Okay, yeah, more, more observing. Okay, like yesterday you have learned on how to do assessment, right? Uh, so maybe you can practice some of the assessment there and implement also during this activity. Uh, okay, so in my assessment, usually I will note uh, the first one, uh, what are the position, what are the activity, and how long the student able to maintain during the activity or to uh, give attention during activity. So from there, from that information, I can plan for the next day activity so that there is uh, the student shown an improvement. Or maybe, uh, so if the student shows a decrease uh, improvement or, or no improvement, so I will change other activity so that I can see uh, there is a uh, positive impact on the student. Okay. Okay, good. So now I will proceed on the growth motor activity. So just now you learned on the position, right? Uh, position Positioning, uh, there is no equipment, only position of the body and the activity. But the growth motor activi activity, you might need uh, extra equipment if you don't have it's okay, you can also practice on the position without this uh, this one. Lah. 
So here I only share with you what are the equipment that you might need. And I would like to advise you to have it, but not force you to buy it. It depends on your need and your budget of the school, okay? Okay, so what activity is suitable for my student? Okay, so first you might be uh, want to do activity to improve neck and thumb. So here are some of the activity you can do. For example, number one, you can try with a scooter board. So by uh, doing the scooter board activity, you can ask students to uh, lying down on the stomach here or the prone position and uh, ask, ask them to move the scooter board with the hand. So by doing this activity, you can strengthen the, uh, strengthen what? You can strengthen the uh, neck muscle, you can strengthen the shoulder muscle, elbow, and also the wrist. Ah, so it's very important if you see the student with poor handwriting skill, you can provide activity using the scooter board so that they can improve these three parts. Okay, don't only focus on the finger, okay? Because other joint, as I mentioned before, this is uh, the fundamental of motor development. We start from the medial, medial to lateral and proximal to distal. Proximal meaning that from the neck, uh, shoulder, and to distal meaning that from the elbow to the wrist, uh, okay? So the next one, you can try with the bouncing on the ball here. So by doing this activity, you can uh, improve the trunk strength. Because when you're bouncing, right, the trunk will move up and down, up and down. So uh, it will help them to strengthen on the trunk. Okay. The next one, you might also want to try with the prone on the slider like this. Okay. So ask the student to reach for the toys. Okay. So by doing this, you can improve on the neck strength and also the back, uh, the trunk and also the hand reaching part. Okay, so basically this all activity will be conducted by OT. Uh, okay, so but if you teacher want to try, you can try. Uh, but if you're not sure, you can get advice from the OT first and see how you can do in your classroom. Okay, so now we, we do on the activity to improve shoulder and arm. Okay, so shoulder and arm, you can do activity like here. Uh, you can try to do activity with a wheelbarrow here. This is a wheelbarrow, climbing wall, a throwing, a catching ball, and also the monkey bar. Okay, by doing the wheelbarrow here, so you can strengthen the shoulder, wrist, and also the uh, elbow. Okay, so the student will do the weight bearing activity where the weight of the body will be placed on both hands here. Uh, so both hands will be increased in strength. So you can practice do in a group where they have the wheelbarrow racing. Okay. And the next one is the walk, uh, walk climbing. So walk climbing, uh, this one is a very complex activity where it will involve the hand and leg. Uh, so this is a very uh, good activity for you to improve the coordination or control of the eye, hand, also the leg. Uh, so this is very complex. So if your student unable to do this activity, you might try to do a simple, simpler one first. For example, like crawling on the floor, okay, or wheelbarrow first before you proceed with this activity, okay. So the next one is the throwing and catching ball. So throwing catching ball, there is a three step. You can try, which is you can throw over the head, which is higher. Throw ball over the head, throw ball, throw ball uh, uh, on the shoulder level, or throw on the below, below shoulder. Uh, so there's three steps. So every three step here, you target different muscle. Uh, okay. So this is very important for you to choose activity and suit with the student, okay? If your student able to do this uh, number three, so you might want to try the student to throw 
uh, with the number two or number one and see if he can do or not. Okay. The next one is the uh, monkey bar. So the monkey bar is a good activity to strengthen the hand and also the back muscle. Uh, okay. So this activity you can try in your classroom or in the playground in your school. Okay. Okay. The next one you can try with the parachute. Uh, parachute activity and also the rolling ball forward while sitting. Okay. Okay. The next activity you can try is uh, what coloring on the plastic here. So we put the plastic in the vertical or on the wall, and then you can ask the student to put a color on the plastic. So this one we improve on the DEF. Okay. The shoulder, elbow, and also the wrist. Okay, the next one we do activity with the shaving form. So ask the student to put the shaving form on the table and then we ask him, them to do all the uh, writing, writing using finger. So this activity will improve on the DEF, shoulder, wrist, and also the elbow, wrist, elbow, elbow, wrist. Okay. Okay. So this uh, this one activity to improve the wrist and finger. So by squeezing activity or spraying, uh, okay. So for example, like this picture. So the child in the standing position. So they are they are they will uh, spraying color on the uh, paper here. Okay. You might also want to do activity for like as uh, like this, like floating floating coin or using the rubber band or you can also play um, play while uh, play play like this uh, you, uh, you can see the student here is squeezing the squeezing squeezing so the the creamy object coming out okay so the next one okay so before we move forward, uh, let's do some exercise. <laughs> okay, are you still with me? Are you okay? Can I see your face now? <laughs> okay, good. I see two faces here. Good. Yes. Are you still with me, right? Uh, okay. So now we we'll, we will do a case study together. I need you to open the, your Padlet just now. So those who are able to open this, you can open your Padlet. I give you the link. Okay, wait. Okay, here is the link. You can click and try to see on the case study number one. Can you see my slide? Can you see the, sorry, my screen? Okay, so case study number one. Okay, student A demonstrate a slouching sitting position, suggest one posture and one activity to help him. Ah, you imagine this is your student, right? So can you suggest one uh, posture and one activity you can try in your classroom to help this student? Uh, you can comment here. Okay. Okay, you can start uh, commenting here. Standing with drawing on the wall, okay. Standing on the upright position and suggest activity is jumping with throwing a ball into the basket. Wow, this is advanced <laughs> because it involves many skills. Uh, if you should be able to do it, then okay. Supine, lying. Okay, you can ask them to lying, lying supine. Okay. Posture is supine, activity is reading book. Okay. The others? Prone extension on trophy ball. Yes, that's good. Lying and reading book. Okay. When you do supine activity or lying, right? So you actually stabilize the back muscle.
but you are not improving the muscle. You only improving on the DEF, shoulder, elbow, and wrist only, but not at the back muscle. Uh, okay, but pro, okay, for extension, sit on the ball. Okay, good. Phone, read and writing, okay. Kneel, okay. Kneeling activity, play with ball, four point crawling, okay. Good. Any more question? Any more answer? Phone extension on the gym ball, yes. Good. Lying on the ground, four point crawling. Use gym ball to improve the balancing, uh, okay. If the student have a balancing issue, then you can try with the gym ball to improve the balancing skill. Okay, supine flexion, yes. If the supine lying on the floor is not encouraged because they only uh, stabilize the back muscle. But if you do supine flexion, yes, you can do it because you can improve the back muscle and also the uh, neck muscle. Ah, that's good. Sit on soft chair. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a good suggestion because when you sit on the soft chair, right? Uh, meaning that you have a back rest, which is a back, uh, the back rest also is very soft. So that one will support the trunk, support the trunk to be in the that position. Uh, okay. Also, we can do the wheelbarrow activity. Yes, good. You can also try the wheelbarrow activity. Long leg sitting near to wall. Okay, yes, you can do the long leg sitting because when you do the long leg sitting, right, you can. Observe the back muscle will be scrunching, but when you put on the wall, uh, the student will have trying to, to stabilize on the wall. But you also can grading the activity. For example, today you want to do the long leg sitting on the wall, but tomorrow maybe you can change the activity, long leg sitting within, um, not involving the wall. So that the student practicing from the supporting, uh, supporting on the wall, uh, slowly without supporting from the wall. Crab walking, that's good. Uh, okay, great. You are now understand. <laughs> okay, let's move on on the next one. Case study number two. Same link, you can go to the case study number two. Okay, student B has a weak hand strength and unable to throw ball more than two feet. Suggest one posture and one activity to help her improve hand strength. Ah, so you'll be able to throw ball, but not more than two feet. So how to improve this? What posture and what activity you can give her? Okay, let's see. Okay, any 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 answer? Okay, not yet. You get the answer, do you get the question, right? Student so B has a weak hand strength and unable to throw ball more than two feet, suggest one posture and one activity to help her improve hand strength. So this activity you are targeting on the DEF, the shoulder, elbow, and also the wrist. So what activity? Ah, you can go back on your note. Any any answer? Elbow and finger. Throw and throw and receive the ball. Catch some soft ball things. Okay. Use a gym ball, lay on gym ball and throw small ball in the basket. Wow. Okay, this is good. Uh, this is a good suggestion. Okay. Monkey ball. Yes, you can try with monkey ball. Because that will strengthen the arm, arm, head, arm muscle. Standing, okay, standing, and then kneel, lying on the gym ball, supine, posture throwing, so forth. Yes. So, uh, this for this one, you can uh, try the supine posture while uh, while trying while throwing the ball. Okay. Four point crawling, climbing into the tunnel okay good suggestion any more suggestion clapping hand together with peers okay clapping hand will improve on the hand control and coordination but not strength ah 
But this is this is good. This is interesting because I don't teach you to do clapping before this, but you're coming up with your idea, which is good, even though it is not involving the strength. Four point crawling on trappy ball and grab small ball into basket is good. Playing door. Playing door, you're only focusing on the finger. Remember, you only work on the finger, not on the other joint. Then it's very important for you to understand that the fundamental of motor development start with the medial to lateral and proximal to distal. Please target on the shoulder. Okay. To improve control, increase the frequency of practice. To improve strength, increase the weight of the ball. Other activity, maybe monkey bar, flip, flipping parachute. Yes, that's a very good suggestion. Press hot head on wall. Yes, good. This activity also very good. And you can press on wall or you can ask the student to push heavy object. For example, like push a ball, bigger ball, something like that. Where bear walking and picking up some stuff. Yes, good. Yes, well done, everyone. I am sure you are understand now on what to do with your student. So let's move on to the case study number three, the last one. Okay. Student C demonstrate difficulty to control hand during coloring activity. She also gives too much pressure on the coloring crayon on color when coloring. Suggest one position and one activity to help her. Ah, okay. Student C demonstrate difficulty to control hand. So the key point here is student unable to control hand during coloring activity. So he, she will press too much when coloring and he un she unable to control the hand during coloring. So what activity you want to give? And so that's one position and one activity. Okay, this is very, um, uh, uh, you can observe many students are also doing this because they are they're not coloring, but they are pressing too much. So you can see the color very dark on certain area while very light on a certain area. Okay. So for fogging, what is fogging? You can try lying on stomach. Okay, lying stomach, yeah, very on the DEF, shoulder, uh, elbow and knee, uh, sorry, and, and wrist. Prone posture playing ball while lying on stomach. That's good idea. Use the roll to cover the use the roll to cover the crayon. How? Pinch the ball. Okay, yes, you can also try that. Standing position and hand painting on plastic. Yes, that's very good. Ah. So he has more uh, practice on, on how to control the hand movement. Use pan table. What is pan table? Okay, any more suggestion? Outdoor as a bigger grip to release the pressure on hand. Oh, you want to play play doh? Uh, yeah, play doh also is good. But remember that will only focusing on the finger. So you might also on the sh uh, shoulder and elbow first if there's uh, affected in strength or not okay because when we do writing right this not only finger involved but the shoulder also playing a big role okay using masking tape to practice how to control the pressure mm, this is interesting prone on floor while squeezing therapeutic party yes good you can try also this use sunburn okay good well done, everyone. So we stop. Um, we stop the study here. Okay, we stop the case study here, and that's good. Marvelous. I can see that you understand on what I have been taught today. That's very good. Okay, so now we will move on on the classroom based activity okay i'm very sure you are thinking on how to do this activity in your classroom because 
you are packed in your schedule, your timetable is very packed, you don't know where to slot in the activity, you don't have time and blah, 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 right? So, so today I will advise you on how to do all this activity during your classroom, okay? So first you list down your classroom schedule. So this is my classroom schedule, okay? So A, at 8 a.m. I will have a circle time, then at 8.30 I will do exercise, and then 9 a.m. I will do the storytelling, and then I do I will have a writing activity, mathematics, art, interactive play, people play, drama, and music. So this is what uh, we are doing every day. So the question is where to do the activity, where to do a uh, gross motor or fine motor activity? Ha. Huh. That is the question mark because our schedule is very bad. So what I can suggest is you embed all the position, all the activity during your school classroom schedule. Okay, any questions so far? Are you good? Is everyone good? If you're okay, show me your thumbs up. <laughs> That's good. We have another 30 minutes yeah, to catch up with all the knots. Okay, so I will go a little bit faster. So we are moving on the in hand manipulation. So, in hand manipulation is the ability to hold and move an object within one hand. So, there is a three category in in hand manipulation, which is the translation, shift, and also the rotation. Remember that? Eh? Translation, shift, and rotation. So do you prepare your coins and your pencil or pen and paper as I mentioned uh, yesterday? Yes. Okay, we might use this during this uh, topic. So you have to prepare. Okay, the first one. We are going to do the translation. I will stop sharing. Uh, I need you to Turn on your video and I want you to see. Ah, I want to see your face. Come on. Okay, are you ready? Good. So, number one, uh, we are going to do the translation activity. Okay. The translation is the ability to move the object from the fingertip into the Pop. Uh, so this is very crucial activity. That's why you need coin. So you put few coin on your floor or your table. Put like this. Okay. Put your coin on your table or your floor. Okay. So how the translation skill? Okay. I will show you. Yes. Put put first. You have to pick up the coin. Pick one by one and put on the palm. And pick some more and put on the palm. Pick some more and put on the palm like this. Grab on the palm. And pick up and grab on the palm. Okay, this is very simple activity, right? For you, teacher. But this is very, very, very difficult for students. Now you can observe, okay? So remember, the, only, the student need to do in one hand only. Okay, so you pick up all the coin and put in your palm. And now all coin are inside your palm, right? So you need to take it out one by one and put back on the floor or on the table. Uh, don't drop the coin. Uh, do you find it easy or difficult? Uh. I'm sure it's very easy for us lah, okay? But this is very difficult for the student to do, okay? Because they need to pick up and keep the, uh, the coin inside the palm. This is very important activity. As you can see that some students right, are able to hold the pencil properly because they cannot keep, cannot uh, maintain the posture of the pencil and keep between the finger and also the palm during writing. That's why your student might show a difficulty to write. Okay? That's good practice. Maybe you can practice more with your student after this and observe if they can do or not. Okay? 
And then we go to the shift. Okay. Shift is the ability to move object in the linear manner. That's why you need your pencil or your pen with you. So shifting is like the repositioning the pencil. For example, you shift from here, you shift more on the tip and back. Ah, can you do? And shift, shift from here to here and here to here back. Okay, let's try. From the end here and shift, 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 and going back. Is it hard for you? Look like very simple, right? <laughs> I want you to try with your students if they're able to do it or not. I'm sure 80% 80 student cannot do it. Um, so, so that's why it's very important for you to practice this. This is also, uh, you can observe the student while they are unable to hold the pencil properly. Some students hold pencil like here. Some students go here. Because they cannot shift thing or shift the positioning of the pencil. Ah, okay. Okay, good. The next one we're gonna do is the rotation. Okay, rotation is the ability to turn an object around in the pad of the finger and the thumb. So, for example, like you writing like this, right? So you have to rotate the pencil like this. Ah, if you notice, like some pencil have eraser on the top, right? That is very good. When you have pencil like that, because you can ask the student to write and erase. Write and erase. Ah, so the student able to practice to do the hand rotation while writing. Ah, okay. So maybe you can buy a pencil with the eraser on the top so you can practice writing and erasing at the same time. And you can practice the rotation movement. Okay, that's good. And do you have your paper now? Okay. So, uh, activity with the paper. So this this is a very very famous activity. Like I'm sure you have done this a uh, million times with your student. <laughs> okay. You can uh, ask the student to turn the paper and grab making a ball, making a small ball like this. Ah, so this we practice on the finger. So on the paper and making a ball. So all the uh, joint in the finger will move. Okay, all the muscle will working and strengthen at the same time while making the ball. Okay, and turn again and making a ball. So by doing this, right, after finish, you can ask the student to throw the ball and pick it up back and throw again, like you're playing the snowball, okay? So you might also need a bigger or bigger pepper so that you can thumb the pepper like this with two hands and throw. So this is a very good practice for the hand and also the wrist, okay? Okay, that's all. Okay, are you okay, everyone? Okay, good. So if you are good, so we are proceed to the handwriting skill. What happened, yeah? Okay, I think there is um something wrong here. I cannot share my slide now. Oh, okay. It's okay. Maybe you can hear my voice without a slide. We have a few few things to cover. <laughs> Anyone volunteer to see? <laughs> I can see on the comment here. Okay. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay, so we're going to move on the handwriting skill. 
So handwriting development consists of seven, oh, sorry, six steps, which is number one is a scribble, number two is a coloring, number three is a trail or maze, number four is a tracing, copying, and also the writing. Okay, so I hope you can figure out what I'm talking about. Okay, so when you want to start a handwriting activity, right? So make sure your student able to follow first the uh, development term. Okay, if your student unable to do the tracing, you don't expect the student to do the copying. Okay, if the student unable to do the uh, coloring, you don't expect the student to have a very neat handwriting. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Uh, okay. So, how I want to show this here? <laughs> Can you see? Okay. Okay, I show here. All right. So, um, here. Here is an example of the scribble. You can see on the screen. Can you see? Can you see? Okay, this is the example of the scribble. So, and then you can also ask them to do the coloring. So, when you want to do coloring, right? So, you might start with uh, the biggest, bigger object into uh, the smaller and also more complex. So, if you are able to do this, you don't expect the student to color beautifully on this one. So, this is very important for the teacher to choose what kind of material you want to give to your student. Okay. And then you can also try uh, to have activity on the mess like this. So, this mess activity is very good for the hand and high and high coordination. I and also the hand, I and hand coordination, where the child will see the line and do the uh, tracing inside the line here without going up from the line. Okay, let me try to share again. This, ah, oh, still cannot. Maybe I need to stop one device. Uh, still here. Okay. So after that, you can try on the. Yeah, sorry, we, I cannot share the slide because this will, this is not friendly for me. It's not uh com. It's not cooperating well with me. So I don't know why. But later I will give you the note so that you can revise. Okay, I tried many times already. Okay, is that is okay? Never mind. And then maybe you can try on the tracing activity. So when you do tracing, right, you might want to try with the simple line before you proceed to the alphabet or letter. Okay, so like before, that you you know that uh, uh, for, for following the development. The start the student will start with the vertical line, then horizontal line, and then the circular. So for the tracing, you might start with the simple uh, line and shape first before you moving on the letter and alphabet. Okay. And then later you can try ask the student to copy the letter. So you need to know the development first and which level uh, your student are now. Okay. Actually, I have a video to share with you. Uh, it's okay, lah. Okay. So remember, on the free writing skill, you start with the uh, vertical. Sir? Can you share? Try to share again. Okay, I try. Okay. So here, free writing skill. Okay. So here is a free writing skill as you have learned two days before. So you might start with the vertical line, horizontal line, circle, uh, plus sign, and uh, uh, square, and sliding, and X, and triangle. Okay, remember this pattern, okay? So when you want to start activity with the student, you have to remember this pattern before you proceed with the handwriting activity. 
But before that, you might also interested to learn on the lazy egg. Do have you heard about this? Have you ever known what is lazy egg mean? Okay, no, no one. Okay, so let me introduce you. This is the lazy egg activity. So the egg is lazy, so they are laying down because they are lazy. <laughs> okay, so this lazy egg activity is very good for you to teach your student before you teach the alphabet formation. Why I'm saying so? Because when you are doing the lazy egg activity, you will start with number one like this. You will do the uh, circular like this, one, two, and three. Uh, so you will do this motion, okay? So from this motion, we will come up with the letter formation. What letter? So for example, you can try, you can see, eh, from this posi uh, posture, you can write and Yes, you can write an A. Let me show you how. You can write A from here and B from here and C and D and uh, sorry, E. Ah, okay, and F and some more G. Ah, can you see? H and then I and uh, next J and K. Okay, K and then L and M. Ah, and wait. Okay. And oh, so until Z, all of them, yes, all of them. So you can, uh, this, this, that's why it's very important for you to teach your school, your student, before uh, teaching them the alphabet formation. You need to practice the lazy egg formation with them so that later they can form the letter very, uh, they can form the alphabet very nice. Okay. So here are the some uh, videos with me, with my student during the lazy A. Okay, so I asked him to do, to draw a lazy A. So need a prompt, prompt a little bit. Ah, see how he control the hand. Uh, the shape is not, uh, not the same size, but it's okay to practice like this. Yeah. Lazy is lazy A is a great practice in writing them. Yes, that's good. That's that's correct. Okay. Okay. So now, once your student able to write, uh, to do lazy A formation nicely, then you can start with the letter formation, letter development. But before that, before you want to teach them on what to uh, what letter, oh, sorry, on writing the letter. So you need to know what letter to start first. Any idea? We have A until Z. So you want to start with what letter? Any idea? O, uh, L, and then? Any idea? I, Z, oh Z, <laughs> I, X, okay, you have to remember, do you remember this? Do you remember the pre-writing, pre-writing line and shape? So in a pre-writing, you start with vertical, horizontal, circle, and cross, and, oh sorry, uh, oh here, yeah. oh. It's a vertical, horizontal, circle, plus, square, 
triangle. Uh, remember this. So from this line and shape, what letter coming first? Okay. So the first group of letter you can you can teach your student is L, I, T, and F. All the straight line combined with the vertical line. Ah, this is the first group. Okay. The second group you want to uh, ask them to do is all the circle, circle like this, like this. All the all the shape. Okay, that is five. Okay, so we start with C, O, E, A, sorry, A, and D, all the curve. Okay, and then you can start the number three group, which is the complex group, which is combine these uh, circles. For example, like S and U. This is a special letter ah okay the fourth group you can uh, ask them to practice is letter combined with the vertical and also the circle or, or the curve for example like this okay so r n m h and b combined vertical and curve okay the number five group you can try is a digger digger group which is there is tail like this and this which is j g q and p okay and the last one you want to teach remember the triangle here so the last one is the slider slider meaning that shape like a triangle so you have b w y x z and k and k sorry okay 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 so this is a, a small letter that you can teach your students so I've been practiced this uh, method for six years now, so I can see that there is a improvement in the uh, writing skill of the student. Okay, you also might might want to practice with your student on this uh, letter formation and see how it goes. Okay, but it will different on the capital letter. But for me, I will practice on the small letter first. Okay, so you get it. Any question? So we have few things to cover, okay? Now we proceed on the principle in conducting activity. So make sure activity you choose is a child directed, meaning that the student uh, allow the student to choose what activity they want to do. And you also must respect the student pain and discomfort. And lastly, the student preference are used to initiate therapeutic uh, experience within the session. Okay. The number two principle is you can encourage active engagement. Make sure activity you provide with the student will encourage active engagement. Okay. Student must actively engage in activity and student will want to participate because the activity is fun for them. So make sure when you want to provide activity with your student, make sure the activity is fun for them if not the motivation will be low okay and must provide just right challenge so this is very important for you to decide which posture you want to practice which activity you want to practice so that you are not over challenge them so you must know the basic skill that you're still having and practice challenge little by little so the activity is not too difficult for them, that they are feel unachievable and not too easy, that is not beneficial. Uh, okay, remember that. And must uh, the activity must have effective response, which is a good response. So the student show physical or emotional stability and is able to 
uh, that his behavior with a new and useful strategy respond to the challenge present a little bit more how to grading the activity how much or how, how much is enough for them uh, because i have i been covered this because some asking on the grading right so the in, you can work on the intensity how hard so maybe you can choose the low intensity or moderate intensity or vigorous intensity depends on your children's ability to cope with the uh, activity if they enjoy they might want to do the vigorous activity if they have uh, low motivation you maybe start with a low intensity of the activity not too hard but the easy one okay to develop the self motivation first and maybe you can work on the frequency how many uh, so i also cannot answer this how many i should provide to the student because every student is very unique so my I, and every student has their own um, ability to perform it so every every student will have different frequency okay so you can work maybe once a day twice a day once a week or once uh, two weeks is depend on the child uh, needs okay and the next one you can also increase or grading the activity by adding more duration how long maybe you can start with the five minute activity or 10 minutes 30 minutes and one hour so it depends on the student so that's all from me today okay i hope you learned so much during this three days webinar and i can't wait to see you practice with your student make sure you practice with them even though during the pandemic make sure you advise the parent on how to do at home okay Thank you.